Aristotle's Theatrical Principles. Okay, plot. Plot is one of the most important elements of drama. Without plot, you don't have any other elements can exist. Uh, plot simply is a recorded actions. A one action leading another. And there are different types of actions within plot. The first one is called exposition. Exposition is just simply giving you the backstory that you need to know what the further story will be. Who, what, when, and where the characters are doing. So, uh, exposition looks a lot like a straight line. You have actions taking place, but nothing really has happened. No conflict has ha taken place. But, so this is the exposition. The inciting incident is when the conflict has arised, uh, when, when the problem has occurred within the story. Um, and now we're thrust into the story. Now we have a problem, okay? So before exposition, it was just nothing. It was just giving us a backstory. In setting instance, thrusts us in to the story. Then we have what are called these complications. Um, these are like little battles within the story. Nothing really big has happened. Uh, but you have these little problems. The characters win for a while, and we celebrate with them, and then the characters mourn, and they lose. Um, but after that, you have what's called the crisis. That's the point of no return. This is when a character within a story has to make a decision on what to do within the story. Uh, and it's that big point of no return. That leads to... Uh, a rising action, which is basically uh, the character has made a choice of the crisis, point of no return, and now there's consequences to that, which is the rising action, which leads to the climax of the story, the peak of the story, and then we have the falling action, which leads to our denouement. So that's the basic elements of plot. Again, without plot, you have nothing within the story. And as you can see, the, it starts with exposition, which leads to inciting incidents. Then you have a complications, and this, these can be many. And then you have a crisis, point of no return, leading to the climax, leading to falling action, denouement. Now there's three main uh, elements you want to deal with, with uh, plot. And that's inciting incident, crisis, and the climax. These are the three basic ones that um, are like a trigger to a heap. Uh, if you pull a, a trigger of a gun, you can hit a target, right? So it's a trigger journey heap. Or I, I drop this um, chalk. There was a trigger of me letting go, journey of the chalk, but then the hand was my heap, okay? These are the trigger, trigger journey heap, trigger journey heap, trigger journey heap. Um, so that is plot. Characters. That's the next step in Aristotle's principles and the elements of drama. Now characters are important because characters do what the plot says. So the characters are there to help carry out the plot. Um, when you look at the characters, the biggest difference between, the, there's a big divide between the characters. Um, there is one side called the protagonist and then the antagonist. Um, there's usually one protagonist or a pro, there could be several protagonists, but there's usually an, a, a one protagonist force. Um, like I said, it could be two people, um, could be a group of people, but there's always one type of, there's one protagonist well, within the story. Um, and then there's somebody against the protagonist, which is the antagonist. Um, and there's that kind of divide. And that divide is what um, gives us our conflict within the story, usually. Now, this antagonist doesn't always have to be a person. There's four things that the antagonist could be. The antagonist could be uh, yourself. So the protagonist could be the antagonist as well. Uh, thinking about 
uh, in the morning when you're getting ready and you're just fighting yourself, everything goes wrong, well, you are your uh, antagonist. Um, the other one is uh, another individual. So think that you're getting into your car and then you have this tiff with this other car next to you. That individual person is your antagonist. That's two. And then another one can be society. So a whole society. So let's say you are driving and then you know, a police officer pulls you over. That's really not that person who's pulling you over. It's society rules saying you were speeding, right? So that's third. And then the other one can be nature or the gods. Um, that's the fourth one. Uh, and that's kind of think, of a, think of somebody on their wedding day when it rains. That's not really nobody's individual's fault. Uh, no individual person's fault, but it, uh, the gods, nature, fate has, has reigned. So, but that's the antagonist. Um, and then there's also teams. So you, those who are working and helping with the antagonist team, um, those who are working and helping with the antagonist team. Um, and then there's what's called switchers, where someone could start on the protagonist team and then switch the antagonist team. Or, someone on the antagonist team can switch and go to the protagonist team. So we call those switchers. So those are kind of the big things you want to look out for when looking for characters this summer in this class. Is look for protagonists, look for antagonists, look for teams, and look for uh, switchers. And remember, the antagonist is the one that's giving the conflict to the protagonist. And it doesn't have to be an individual person, it can be self, Another person, society, or fate. That's characters. Okay, the next element is language. Now, you may think language is just words, but that's not the case. This is drama, and this is theater, and this is live theater, and even in film, you have, yes, your, your vocal language, which is the words that's written by the script, but you also have... Um, the, the body language, the physical movement of the show. Um, you'll be watching a couple films this, this, uh, uh, semester, this semester, this summer, um, and uh, some of it there's no words at all. And all of these elements of Aristotle's principles still exist. Um, so the big thing to look out for language is, um, is it body language or vocal language, or is it a mix of both? A lot of stories will take one or the other, where you watch a whole story and it's nothing but body language. But then, you'll have another story where it's really not that much movement, it's all about the words. Like, think of Shakespeare. That's heightened language, um, and that's more focused on the vocal. So with language, language is, is kind of a little easier to diagnose and look after, but look for the body language, and the vocal language of, of the characters within each story. That's about language. Okay, the next element is music. Now music, uh, you may think, wait a minute, I thought this was a drama class. Well, music has been uh, connected with drama since the very beginning. Um, music is a great way, music does two things really. Uh, the, the great thing that music does is it, it sets the mood. Um, so ever since the very beginning, kind of Greek and Roman theater, um, they've always had music to kind of help the mood. Um, so ever since the very beginning, kind of Greek and Roman theater, um, they've always had music to kind of help the mood. So if it's kind of a, a scary, a suspenseful moment, you can have that music to help set the, the mood. Because the big thing in drama is you can't really play a mood as an actor. Uh, Uta Hagen, who wrote an acting book, said uh, mood, spelled backwards, is doom. And, and I believe that she's right. Um, because a lot of times um, actors will try to play a mood and then it's just mushy and it's doom. So, but music can help us do that. Because you have major music, minor music that can kind of help with the mood. So music kind of really helps us with the mood. So when you're watching our stories uh, this semester, this summer, um, really listen to the music and how it can help tell the story with the mood. The other thing that uh, music can help us is uh, it helps with our time period. Um, if you're starting to watch a, a movie or a play and you hear like 50s music, 
Well, chances are uh, this play is based in the 50s. So uh, music can also help set the time period of, of when the piece is. And that's kind of the two basic elements I want you to look at uh, this semester is uh, what the music does to either set the mood or set the time period. That's music. Spectacle. Spectacle is basically the visual element of the story. Now, spectacle can be div divided up into four main categories. You have set, you have lights, you have costumes, and you have hair and makeup. Now, all four of those are kind of visual elements of telling the story. Now, when you have to read uh, your plays, for instance, this semester when you read your Shakespeare, um, you won't be able to see all of the visual elements, but the playwright really helps us understand what should be there. Um, in, the, in the olden days in Greek, they used, you usually had two elements. They had heavens, which were usually above, and then you had the hell, which was usually down below. And then you had the characters in between going up and down. And they would have visual elements of heaven with like clouds and happiness, and hell with fire and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so when you're, when you're reading through the plays, really look for set, lights, uh, costumes, and hair and makeup. Because those four kind of make up the visual elements um, within the story. And just as we'll talk about the difference between what's like reading a book and actually you know, seeing a play, um, you can kind of create these four spectacle elements in your mind even when you're reading, reading a play and you're not seeing it live. Um, but one of our assignments will be to go see a live show, and then you can really look at how the sets, lights, costumes, and hair and makeup kind of help with the visual telling of the story. Spectacle. Theme. Theme is the last element of Aristotle's Principles. And it's probably the most important, I think, in my, my mind. Um, it helps combine all the elements into one unified theme. And a theme is kind of like the message of the story, or what, 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 what do you want the audience, what you, thought, what you think the playwright wanted the audience to walk away with. Um, I had a professor once at University of Wyoming say uh, the... Um, the theme is like the bumper sticker of the, of the show. It's short, sweet, and can fit on the back of a bumper. Um, and when you guys start diagnosing your themes, um, I want you to do a kind of a one small sentence, you know. Love conquers all. Uh, that could be Romeo and Juliet. Um, um, you know, revenge is never worthy or right. That could be Hamlet. Um, so the theme is kind of like what you want, what, what do you think the playwright, what was all the elements kind of combined together and what you want the, the audience to think about, to walk away if it's a live production or after they're done reading it. What was the point? What, what did they, what was the overall theme, the overall idea that they wanted within the story? That's theme. 